Okay, we're going to talk about estrogen, which is probably the most polarizing topic in this space, which uh, everyone likes to disagree to disagree on, which I think is hilarious. So I'm going to present my opinion. And if you don't agree with my opinion or don't like my opinion, that's totally fine. Go listen to someone else. But I also think it's important that if you don't agree with the standpoint that you hear the counter argument to make sure that your opinion or your hypothesis holds up. This is called the scientific method. And it is very important when it comes to having a theory to make sure that it stands up to ridicule. So hopefully you get value out of this. So my friend Jay Campbell put up a great post today. I'm going to read it. It says a hormonal optimization fact. And I like that it says fact. Your body is not designed to function at clinically low estrogen levels. Blocking estrogen is not the way to go. It is extremely harmful. People throwing around, quote, estrogen dominance as justification don't understand it's really insulin resistant. Insulin resistance causing high levels of systemic inflammation. Now, Jay has been banging this drum for some time now. I can't remember where I first heard him bring this up. But I think it was in about 2018, but I could be mistaken. So let's call it five years. And I couldn't agree with this more. And rather than explaining what he means by that, because he's done that a million times and he's done it very succinctly, he has some great TRT roundtable discussions where you can go and hear that discussion drawn out by a number of other practitioners as well. But I'd like to put my spin on it. And this is something that I, it's one of the main reasons why I wrote uh, Beyond TRT was to put my stance forward for this, because this is what I have found to be true in practice. And I have found that Jay's perspective on this regarding the role of systemic inflammation impacting with testosterone replacement therapy being the root cause for the side effects that are occurring in men. One thing that I've mentioned for some time now, and naturally I think it is correct because it's my fucking bias, right? Is that firstly, TRT doesn't always go smoothly for everyone. I think that's an important thing to note. I think that it's important to understand that guys do get side effects when they go on TRT. And often these side effects resolve with time. And that's an important point to make. I'm going to get back to that. But other times they don't. And these side effects, when you Google them, or when you just experience them subjectively, can resemble either what the internet tells you are estrogenic side effects, or what you subjectively experience as less masculinizing, less androgenic traits than your expectations are, or perhaps you're bloated and crying and your nipples are tingling like a girl. So it makes sense why people point the finger at estrogen. And can estrogen play a role in the pathology that you're experiencing? Sure. But that's like saying that water is bad because you drowned in it. It's involved, sure. But blocking estrogen, which aromatase inhibitors are not actually doing, they're blocking aromatase, which is a very different distinction, will ultimately cause more harm than good over time. And I'm going to explain why that is. So what's important to understand here is that in practice, you see certain things play out. And this can be different to or in contrary to what the status quo believe on forums like Reddit, whatever fucking forum people are in, Facebook groups, etc. Because a lot of the time in these groups, we experience men anonymously sharing their issues and not sharing enough context and existing in echo chambers rather than getting the advice they need as opposed to the advice they want. And if you fall into a category of a man who is experiencing these side effects, taking an aromatase inhibitor may subjectively improve your negative symptoms acutely. However, it will also cause you side effects both in the short term and the long term, because it's not addressing the root cause of the problem one, and it's essentially taking out the bystander. It's similar to how statins work. So 
what is really going on here? And this is all covered in TRT. I'll be on TRT if you want to read the book. And I'll be doing a webinar on the second part of uh, that book soon where I'll explain it a bit more succinctly than I will ramble on about it now. What I've found in practice is that having a lean body fat percentage on TRT is absolutely fundamentally crucial to your response outside of your self-esteem from when you look into the mirror. I.e., abs are not just for the beach and when you take your shirt off, you actually need to be sub 15% body fat as well as having healthy habits regarding nutrition, alcohol consumption, drug consumption, and good sleep hygiene to actually be able to tolerate the testosterone levels that you would like to have. And this makes sense in terms of looking at from a common sense approach, but a lot of the time Western medicine doesn't follow a common sense approach to looking at the human body as a series of interconnected systems. It looks at pathologies in isolation And then people wonder why when they try to shift certain variables in certain directions, it all goes to shit and they don't feel quite right. So if you're looking at what testosterone dose you think is the optimal amount of testosterone that you should be on. So you go to the doctor or you go to a clinic and your testosterone levels are low and then you shoot for a certain number or you use a certain dose because that's the dose that you think that you're supposed to have to feel the way that you're supposed to feel, to be the man that you were destined to be or that you believe that you're entitled to be because you were born with a cock and balls. And in reality, a lot of the time, the testosterone level that you have in this situation when you first go to the doctor is completely fucking appropriate for how you're living your diet, how you're living your life. If you're boozing and not sleeping properly and eating like crap and you're fat, you are not supposed to have testosterone levels at the top of the reference range or above. You are not. You may want to, and you may feel better in some ways if you do, but your body is not going to tolerate it because your body is actively suppressing your natural testosterone production. So then when you come in with exogenous testosterone, you rub some cream on your balls or you do a couple of injections a week, your body goes, what the fuck is this? It is not enzymatically equipped to actually handle that amount of testosterone. And then you wonder why you're getting side effects and you're wondering why the side effects are estrogenic. And it's because your body is so inflamed that it is suppressing your natural production and this inflammatory state doesn't mix well with optimal testosterone levels. It's unnatural. It is supraphysiological, even if it was is within the physiological range because it's supraphysiological for you based on how you're living. The nuance of this is that some men need to optimize their t- testosterone levels to get their shit together. And also the situation that you're in can be a result of the low testosterone that you've had, particularly regarding insulin resistance. It's a chicken or the egg thing. So if you've had low testosterone for a while and it's completely fucking ruined your metabolism and you become insulin resistant and you're looking at testosterone as a way to help get your life together, then you're sitting there going, okay, well now I'm damned if I do, damned if I don't, I'm fucked either way, what do I do? And the solution for this is to start with a more modest dose and titrate up and give your body time to heal. Now, increasing injection frequency, changing the means of administration, potentially not using HCG, if that's something that you plan to use right off the bat, these are all things that are very beneficial. But one of the most important things that you can do is attack it full head on from a diet and lifestyle approach. You need to start going all in on how the optimal testosterone version of you would be living the day that you start your TRT. And it may still be a bit of a bumpy ride and that's okay. But what you need to do is go, okay, for the first few months while my insulin sensitivity improves and while I improve my diet and lifestyle patterns and I work to improve my body composition, I might need to have a more modest dose to begin with. I might need to inject a bit more often to to uh, prevent peaks and troughs. And I also might need to understand that the optimal level of testosterone that I really want I need to work towards so that I can actually deserve to have that level and that level actually works with my body because you can want your car to be a Lamborghini all you want, but if you just put a Lambo engine in there and drive out of there, it's not going to drive like a Lambo for very long. It's going to blow up and fall apart. And this is what we see with the side effects on TRT. Now, it's not always that simple. Sometimes there can be other issues which cause these side effects out that you can't fix with diet and lifestyle. Sometimes it can be related to hypothyroidism. T3 is one of the chief regulators of aromatase in the body. And if you're chronically stressed 
and your body is upregulating reverse T3 and T3 is not getting into the cell and you're thyroid resistant, then your body is also going to aromatize, aromatize more than you should. But does that mean that you should block the aromatase enzyme? No. It means that you should look at why your body is not regulating its hormones properly and fix the root cause. Because hypothyroidism is going to cause far more issues than excess estrogenic symptoms, especially over time. The other thing that can be an issue is fatty liver disease. A lot of people have liver dysfunction or they have acute liver dysfunction because of the crap they're putting into their bodies. Particularly if having low testosterone has made you feel so shit for so long that you've resorted to escapism and disassociation by alcohol. So you might be in a situation where you have habits that are not serving you that have been these maladaptive coping mechanisms to the fact that you felt like shit for a long time and now you need to get your life in order. That's easier said than done, but it's also the reality of the situation. It's where the ball has landed. So it's so important that guys work with practitioners who can give themselves, who can give them a comprehensive blood analysis and who can also work out based on their diet and lifestyle what the best path forward is to avoid harmful pharmaceuticals that are not going to give you the results that you actually want. And that's actually going to be in your best interest. And a lot of the time, what's in your best interest is doing the work you need to do, not the work that you want to do. And that might be uncomfortable. But if you want to achieve the expectations that you have, you also might need to realize that not applying yourself in that way is unrealistic and you're just not going to get the results you deserve. So I'm in a situation now where I have thousands of clients on TRT and I have for the last few years and I have zero who block estrogen, zero who use um, anything like SERMs or aromatase inhibitors because we get to the root cause of why they're not tolerating their testosterone properly and we adjust their dose and we adjust their diet and lifestyle accordingly. We're patient and we give it time. And that's the most important thing for you guys to understand is that TRT is a holistic intervention and it's an intervention that is not straightforward and taking testosterone in isolation is not going to turn you into the most optimal version of yourself. And in fact, if you don't meet the medicine halfway with good diet and lifestyle practices consistently over time, that's the other thing that breaks people's expectations is that you have to consistently apply yourself for a while. Your default actually has to be looking after yourself well. So you need to show up from tomorrow and you need to consistently do that over time to actually break this cycle and to actually heal the body. Because if you've been in a hypogonadal state for a long time or your body was suppressing your natural testosterone production for a long time, you've likely got a bunch of other issues as well that might not be as cool or as sexy as taking a, a, you know, a testosterone injection and feeling more masculine. You might have more issues going on that is hampering your outcomes in terms of actually getting the results that you're hoping to achieve. So when it comes to these issues, don't reach for the aromatase inhibitors reach for someone who can actually help you out in terms of understanding what's going on. And sometimes it's just a matter of going, dude, you just need to give it time. You just need to give the treatment time to work. And you need to understand that you're, what you're wanting to be is more androgenic, more calm. You're wanting to have more masculine traits. And I completely understand that because if you've been hypergonadal for a long time, those traits take a long time to come, but they also take work to evolve. So Blocking your estrogen and going, okay, well, let's just block the chick hormone and then I'm going to be more of a dude. I'm going to be more cool, calm, collected, and I'm going to be more like the person who I want to be. You can't fast track that. It's going to take time. Puberty takes two to five years. Do you really think that you're going to reach the end outcome of TRT at 12 weeks? Absolutely fucking not. It's just not going to happen. And a clinic or a, a practitioner who's financially incentivized to upsell you on ancillaries They'll sell you the snake oil. They'll make the profit. But at the end of the day, you're just going to do yourself more harm than good. So check out my friend Jay's uh, TOT Bible if you want to check that out as well. He's got some great uh, lecture podcast from Neil Rousier where they go through estrogen from years and years and years ago, as well as his TOT roundtables where they discuss this. There's some great clips from that that summarize it very, very well. I'd highly recommend checking all that out. And if you want to hear more of my explanation on this that you can refer back to later, uh, check out Beyond TRT, which is on my website. Thank you for your attention.